Hello guys and welcome to today's project of making nut-free macarons that's also gluten-free. No ground almonds or flour is used. The ingredient list for this is in the description. After some trial and error, I was able to achieve that nice smooth surface and chewy center. This is how I did it and what I used. The ground almond replacement is something called okara, which is soya pulp that has been cooked. This is a byproduct when you make soya milk. It is the remains of what is left during the filtration process when making the milk. On the top right is the video if you're interested on how I make my own soya milk at home. After you manage to get yourself some okara by either making it yourself or purchasing it, take a tray and lay some kitchen paper on. We are going to dry the okara due to the high moisture content in it compared to ground almonds. We don't want a wet macaron later. What I am doing here is sieving the okara to make it smaller. It kind of resembles ground almonds at this stage. Place some more kitchen paper on the top and place it in the fridge unwrapped. The fridge will dehydrate the okara, leave it be overnight. In the meantime, while waiting, do check out my other videos. Here is a link on the top right corner. The next day. We can start the macaron process. Take a small pot and pour in 75 grams of water in first. Then, 300 grams of caster sugar. Place the pot on the stove to medium to high heat. We want it to boil until it reaches 118 degrees Celsius. While that is boiling away, place in your mixing bowl 110 grams of room temperature egg whites, preferably two days old that has been left out outside at room temperature covered. Let's check the boiling sugar syrup. Now it is at 112 degrees. We can turn on the mixer to maximum speed. Once the syrup reaches 118 degrees Celsius, take it off from the heat and pour on the side of the mixing bowl a slow and steady stream. Let that whip until it cools down and thickens up. We want the temperature of the meringue to be about body temperature. Once it reaches to about body temperature using a thermometer, scrape the sides and leave it to one side. The next process will be rather fast, so leaving the meringue to one side is not a problem. Take a food processor and pour in 225 grams of icing sugar and 150 grams of okara. Blend that until it becomes a paste. Next, take the paste out and then sieve over 225 grams of icing sugar. The reason I am doing it this way is so that I don't break down all the okara in the food processor. Next, take a plastic scraper and work the sieved icing sugar in. You will want to do this part of the process as late as possible to avoid it from drying out. Now is when we can add in the meringue to the Okada icing sugar paste. Mix it in batches of three. You can be a little rough with the first two batches of meringue that goes in. What you're going to do now is the macronage. The macronage is the stage where the batter is worked until smooth, shiny and flowing. What we are looking for is the lava consistency. I prefer mixing it with a plastic scraper rather than with a spatula is so that I can feel the mix. Pull up to check the mixture. It should flow naturally while still holding some form of shape when dropped. Now we can assemble the piping bag. I will be piping on a baking mat. You, of course, can use baking paper or a silicone mat. At this point in the experiment, I am not looking at the sizing. That can be up to you. Also, make sure your mat is totally flat. Unfortunately, mine has a crease in it. How unlucky, it's also in the middle. Tap the tray below with even taps on all sides. I do about two taps per side, so about eight taps in total. Leave the macarons to set for at least 30 minutes. You might have to leave it longer depending on the humidity in the room. Come back and check. Touch the surface of the skin and see if it has dried. Place them in an oven set at 130 degrees, low or no fan, for about 15 minutes and then turn the tray for another 6 minutes. When the timer goes, 
and you have to check the macarons, you should be able to pull them apart from the mat rather easily, and then you will know that they are done. I personally like to bake my macarons slightly a little more than usual, because when I keep the macarons in the fridge, they can last a little longer before the humidity in the fridge attacks them, making them super soft. After all, what we are looking for is that nice crust that isn't soggy. There you go, a nice round top with a flat bottom that isn't hollow or caved in at the bottom. My only advice is to perhaps flavor the macarons with vanilla, otherwise it can be rather beany from the soya bean, but that doesn't bother me as I love soya beans. All what you have to do now is do the macaron pairings and fill them. And there you have it guys on how I made nut-free macarons. As usual, it was a pleasure having you with me today. If you enjoyed what you watched, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.